This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge. And in this video, we're talking about revision timetables. Isn't that exciting? Now, back in the day when I was in secondary school, I used to use the standard prospective revision timetable method, you know, where you plan out your revision in advance, like six weeks in advance. But for the last six years or so, I've been using the patented retrospective revision timetable method, and I've never looked back. Anyone else find that funny? No, just me. Never mind. This video is going to be split up into three parts. Firstly, I'll talk about what a standard prospective revision timetable looks like for most people and explain some of the problems that I used to have with this method when I used it back in my secondary school days. Secondly, I'll introduce the idea of the retrospective revision timetable and explain why I think it solves all of the problems that the prospective revision timetable does. This really needs a new name. And finally, I'll show you using Google Sheets exactly how I create my own retrospective revision timetable and why I think that makes your studying more efficient by incorporating active recall and spaced repetition. So yeah, let's just get started. Okay, so prospective means looking forward and retrospective means looking back. And what most people think of as a revision timetable tends to be prospective. So it tends to look something like this. You've got your dates down one column and then you've got the topics that you're gonna revise each day in your kind of rows. And the idea is when you're making these, you'd predict in advance what kind of topics you wanna be doing. But this method has some problems. And I used to use this when I was kind of pre-GCSE, but I recognized quite early on that it was I was being quite inefficient. And there's four main problems that I used to have with this method. So firstly, this method requires us to, in a way, prophesize, look into the future and work out kind of six weeks in advance, what sort of topics we're gonna to be struggling most with six weeks from now. And this for me was always tricky because there were always random days where something would prop up and I'd be going out with some friends or, you know, sitting at home doing a raid on World of Warcraft. And, you know, I just wouldn't follow my study timetable. Or if I did follow it to a T, I'd realize that actually I'm repeating subjects pointlessly or, you know, more often than not, I just wouldn't end up following it at all. Secondly, I think a problem with this method is that it encourages us implicitly to think of revision as something that is a function of time rather than a function of topics. So we've got the time axis down our kind of main axis. And therefore every day we think, okay, it's the 7th of April, I'm gonna consult my revision timetable and I'm gonna therefore revise these three topics. And that's not really how studying should be done. And I realized this later that I think it's better to think of it in terms of topics rather than in terms of time. So instead of thinking that each day I need to get three topics done, instead I'll be thinking in terms of subjects and in terms of topics and thinking that by the end of the exam period, I want to know everything about every topic. Therefore, what do I need to do for that to take place. And this is gonna sound a bit abstract, but I'll explain it in more detail when we explain the retrospective timetable, and you'll hopefully see that that method solves this particular problem. Thirdly, with this standard prospective revision timetable, there's no real way of seeing how much of each subject you know. Apart from doing past papers and apart from having your own separate record, like if I were to glance down this list, and it's, let's say, the 10th of April, I can see that, okay, well, I studied physics, electricity on the 4th, but, I mean, do I know the topic? Are there any other topics in physics? There's no easy way of me seeing an overview of the subject and therefore working out exactly what I need to learn. And finally, there's the whole thing of actually creating one of these timetables in the first place. I always used to view this as an activity in procrastination. I'd be like, okay, I need to get some work done. You know what? I've not made my revision timetable for the year yet. I'm gonna sit down and get all my pretty colors out back in the day before the iPad Pro existed and the Apple Pencil wasn't a thing. Get my pretty colored highlighters out and my felt tip pens and make this fancy big ass revision timetable and I would never follow it. Equally, I had some friends who would regard the revision timetable as such an insurmountable thing that they had to do before they started studying that it put them off studying for like, you know, a period of weeks to months because they had to sit down and make this timetable and just couldn't get around to, you know, overcoming the activation energy required to make one of these. So those are just some problems with the prospective revision timetable. These are all just my thoughts. Maybe it works for you, but I'll explain what the retrospective revision timetable looks like now, and hopefully you might be able to take something away from that to make your own studying a little bit more efficient. Okay, so a retrospective revision timetable looks something like this. So as you can see, we've got the topics within physiology, these six different topics, we've got those down the main axis of our spreadsheet. And this is the exact opposite to how it is with the prospective revision timetable where we had the dates down the front. So let's say it's the 4th of April and I've arbitrarily studied the heart and the kidneys. Using my retrospective revision timetable, I'm gonna note the fact that I studied the heart and the kidneys on the 4th of April. Then let's say it's the 5th of April. I look at my retrospective sheet and I see, oh, I haven't revised the lungs yet. Why don't I do that? So I do that. And then on the 6th and the 7th, I do the rest of the topics because I see that they're blank and I haven't done them yet. So now let's say it's the 8th of April and I know that I need to revise physiology. I look down my list and think, huh, 
So it's been about four days since I've done the heart and the kidneys and I vaguely reckon that the kidneys are a little bit harder. So I'm gonna go for the kidneys and then I revise the kidneys on the 8th of April. But because I'm a good student and I'm using effective study techniques, I'm not just gonna read my notes on the kidneys because that would be a complete waste of time. Instead, I'm gonna be using active recall. And hopefully when I studied the kidneys on the 4th of April, I wrote down a long list of questions for myself that I could answer, or I got some past papers from somewhere or I found an essay plan with essay questions, this sort of stuff. Either way, I'm using Active Recall. I am, I've got the book closed and I'm trying to answer all the questions that I previously wrote for myself about the kidneys. And then, you know, I get some stuff wrong, so I look it up. And I'd say, overall, I judge that I'm reasonably okay at the kidneys, but not perfect. So I'm gonna highlight that in yellow. This is the classic traffic light method of, you know, color coding. Now let's say it's the 9th of April and I think, you know what, why don't I do the heart? Because it's been a while since I've done that. So do the heart on the 9th of April. And then having answered the active recall questions that I set for myself on the previous time I studied it on the 4th, I think, you know what? I'm actually pretty good at the heart. So I'm gonna color that in green. Fantastic. And I'm just gonna fill in some random dates. So hopefully you can see how I've done that here. Now let's say it's the 13th of April and I'm thinking, you know what? I should revise some physiology. I look down this list and I see that, okay, well, it's been a while since I studied the kidneys. But the kidneys are yellow, and actually, even though I studied the lungs on the 10th of April, they were red at the time. So you know what, I'm gonna prioritize the lungs, because the question I'm gonna be asking myself each day is, if the exam were tomorrow, which topic would I be least happy about? And currently I'm least happy about the lungs, which is why I'm gonna revise them on the April the 13th. And I'm gonna color code those in yellow afterwards because I think, okay, I'm now at a yellow level when it comes to the lungs. So now let's say it's April the 14th, and I'm thinking, great, I don't have any reds left on this list. So why don't I revise the kidneys because it's been the longest time since I've done that. This is spaced repetition in action. And you know, I revise the kidneys and I'm pretty good at the kidneys, so that, that, then that becomes green. And as you can see, over time, we develop this understanding of every single topic within our subject because each day we are tackling the thing that we find most difficult. We're not doing that thing with the prospective revision timetable where we're studying a topic because we told ourselves we'd study that topic six weeks ago. We're studying the topic that we have decided we are weakest on. And therefore, every time we have a study session, we are working on our weakest point and therefore getting the most bang for our buck in terms of revising efficiently and trying to maximize our marks in the exam and our knowledge for day-to-day -day life. And the idea is that hopefully by the end of it, as the exam approaches, you look at physiology and you think, you know what, everything is a green on this. I know physiology. You look at anatomy and think, oh, I've still got a few areas of yellow. So I'm gonna screw physiology for today. I don't care about it. I'm gonna focus on anatomy because those are my weak areas. This gives you a very easy way of seeing a whole overview of your subject without having to predict anything in advance because we are terribly bad at predicting the future. And finally, one great thing about this is that it doesn't really take any effort to get started beyond initially scoping the subject and just writing down the list of every single topic in your spreadsheet. And I think that in itself is an incredibly valuable exercise because a subject can often seem very daunting until you write down all the topics that are in it. And then you think, oh wow, you know, physiology seems complicated, but actually there's only really six topics. So great, I can do six topics. That's like one topic a day. I've got eight weeks until my exams. I can repeat every single topic eight times. That's pretty incredible. I can learn all of human physiology. And that's a nice attitude to have rather than kind of being in the dark and be like, oh, I need to revise some chemistry, but I'm not really sure what to revise because I don't really know what's in it. And the specification has 85 different points of it. And uh, yeah, whatever. So this is the retrospective revision timetable. Now let's jump into Google Sheets and I will show you how that works in real life by using an example from my third year of university. All right, so this here is the retrospective revision timetable that I used in my third year of university. That was the year that I did by far the best in. Uh, I won the prize for the best exam performance that year uh, when I was studying psychology, which was pretty awesome. And I think the reason that that happened was because I very aggressively used all of the most efficient study techniques, active recall, spaced repetition, spider diagrams, flashcards. And I'll be making a video at a later date about exactly how I memorized 50 different essays to you know, absolutely smash those exams if I can say so myself. Anyway, this is the Google Sheet. And as you can see, I've got it split up into section A, section B, section C, which corresponds to our three papers within psychology. And as you can see, I've got a list of all the topics down one end and the dates in the other one. So taking a look at this, we can see that on the 20th of April, I did these four topics. I did implicit versus explicit memory, recollection versus familiarity, semantic versus episodic memory, memory and short-term memory versus long-term memory. And these are kind of essay based things, but I'll, I'll talk more about exactly how I studied these particular topics in that video that I mentioned a little bit earlier. Anyway, the point is I've done all these on the 20th of April, and then I repeated the top one implicit versus explicit on the 22nd and then I had a bit of a gap. And then on the 12th of May, I repeated it again, and then I started color coding it because I was like, right, I'm getting close to the exam now, I should start color coding my stuff. And you can see that over time, 
everything has become green and Saturday was like the Saturday before the exam, Tuesday was the Tuesday before, I think the exam was on a Wednesday or a Thursday, something like that. And yeah, over time, I've repeated this topic. So like the top essay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I repeated it seven times. This was all active recall based repetition. It was me drawing out my spider diagram over and over again until I could do it from memory, until I could basically write out any essay you gave me on implicit versus explicit memory. It could cite 10 papers in that essay. And all because I used active recall and spaced repetition to repeat it seven times until the point where it was green before the exam. Um, and we can see I've done the same thing for section B. This was all about uh, animal cognition, uh, comparative cognition, how the, the thinking of animals differs to the thinking of humans. So theory of mind, future planning, metacognition, do animals navigate using cognitive maps? Uh, do animals understand causality? Do animal, like what's the difference between human and animal language? And finally, section C, which was my personal favorite, was all the various things about intelligence and IQ. And for example, sex differences in IQ, very controversial. Sometimes even race differences in IQ, even more controversial, very exciting topic. And then a little bit of stuff about personality, whether there are any genes that influence personality, but you know, who cares? That's all psychology. The point is, you know, 21st of April, 2nd of May, 12th of May, 13th of May, the Saturday before, the Friday before, that sort of stuff. And over time, the stuff has become green because it means I know all of it. So this is the retrospective revision timetable created in Google Sheets. It's very straightforward. List of topics down the A column and then the date that you revised the topic. Ideally color coded based on how well you knew it before you looked at your book on along the rows. And that's really all there is to it. So hopefully this video has explained why I think that the retrospective revision timetable is a better, in my opinion, more effective, more efficient way of studying than the prospective revision timetable, the bog standard revision timetable that we all implicitly get taught from a young age. Um, just to summarize, the main reasons why I think it's good are firstly, it means you don't have to prophesize into the future because that is impossible. Secondly, it means that you see an overview of all your topics. Thirdly, it encourages you to think of your studying in terms of topics rather than in terms of time, because it doesn't really matter how long something takes. All that matters is that by the end, you know everything rather than, you know, I'm going to do my three topics a day for 20 days. And it doesn't matter what, what happens by the end of it. You know, focusing on it in terms of topics helps understand stuff. And fourthly, it's so easy to make one of these spreadsheets. You don't have to spend the cognitive effort of thinking six weeks into the future and trying to imagine yourself at that point and how many subjects you need to do. Instead, all you have to do is just write down the topics and you can just get cracking with your revision. So thank you very much for watching. Before we go, I just want to say a massive thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Squarespace are an absolutely fantastic website design, hosting content platform that you can use to make a website, a blog, an e-commerce store, anything like that. They've got really nice designer templates to choose from. So, you know, if you don't know anything about web design, or even if you do, you can just get one of those templates, get started with them, and then you can customize them endlessly if you want. They've got 24 seven customer support. And actually I'm redesigning my own personal website, aliabdal.com using Squarespace, and it makes it so easy to do. And because I know a little bit about coding, I'm also able to tweak it to my liking. And if I run into any problems, I'll just message their support team and they just get back to you practically immediately. And if you want, you can even hop on a phone call with them and they'll like talk you through stuff and explain how stuff works. So if you fancy giving Squarespace a try, you can sign up for a free trial by following the link in the video description. And then if you do decide to upgrade to a paid subscription like I've done, you can also get 10% off by using my special code. So thank you very much Squarespace for sponsoring this video. And thank you for watching the video. I hope you gained something from it. I hope you've you know, glean some kind of insight as to my personal method for the retrospective revision timetable. If you can think of a better name for that, please let me know in the comments down below. Equally, if you have any questions about it or any questions about anything else study related, drop a comment down below and I'll be more than happy to make videos about this sort of stuff in the upcoming exam season if people are finding them helpful. So thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.